on the four to six watch and I'm just finishing up. Pretty much stayed a steady 15 knots through my whole shift. Um, but the swells are picking up a little bit more so it hasn't been as calm as the last couple nights have been. And uh, we're just kind of motor sailing. We're pointing as high into the wind as we can. And uh, so we're just motor sailing to make a bit more easting to be able to get around the coast of Nicaragua before we really start pointing south. So yeah, the sun's just coming up and I think it's gonna be a good day. But we are going a little bit off course because we're following the wind and I think we need to do something about it, so. Making as much progress to the east during the first few days of this passage was crucial. Not only would it set us up for an incredible sail later on, but it was also necessary to avoid the notorious pirate infested waters off the coast of Nicaragua. Then this is the Nicaraguan coast and there's this little shelf, kind of like banks, it's called the Gordo Banks, that comes off of this tip of Nicaragua. Uh, and there's a lot of fishermen that hang out there and because uh, of the political situation in Nicaragua, uh, times are bad, they're sort of like it's been in Venezuela. And so it's caused a lot of normal fishermen to be very desperate. And so they have been coming up and boarding yachts and stealing stuff. Uh, well, there was one case where they actually took the whole boat. And so we're gonna go way out. You know, Our plan is just to make easting and then we're gonna come down like this and we're gonna be sailing in the shipping lanes out here and then we're gonna curve down. Baby nuts. She's okay. She woke up and she was really happy, but then the wind picked up another few knots and we started really leaning and she just puked up all her breakfast. Oh. It's hard because if I don't like give her a show to watch, like she does not lay still. And then that's even worse when she's trying to like run around when we're leaning like this. I mean, I wish she was old enough so I could like tell her like, just sit here and watch the horizon. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't get that. The good news is that in approximately six hours, we will be done with our easting. Oh. Done, done, done. Stupid easting. We can turn to That's turn to starboard. That's going to be such a relief to just make that turn and like come off the window a little bit. We have 34 Especially miles. Now when it's blowing like 19 knots, almost 20, so. Yeah. How did you sleep? Good! So, so, so. Not really good. <laughs> really not good. And it's okay. There was like this one point where, because they, they have the wooden um, plaque right here to keep us from falling over. Leeboard. Leeboard, that's okay. They had the leeboard right here. I was on this side, and then we hit a wave and then tilted, and I went and smacked my face on that. Oh no! Jade actually just smacked her head <laughs> trying to get into the it was so funny. Not for her, for me. <laughs> for we find ourselves nearing the halfway mark of the passage, and we finally got some wind, although we were hard on it, continuing our easting before we make our glorious turn south and put the wind a little more on the beam. 
I often find myself mesmerized by the waves and the immense power they contain. I can easily spend an entire watch hypnotized by the waves and how the whole of Delos works her way up, over, and sometimes through. When she gets powered up and healed over, it feels very graceful, almost like she's flying along on rails in the ocean. There's nothing else in life that I can compare to it. Now it's blowing a solid 20 true 25 apparent. We're jamming. Solid 20s, hey? This is fun. Yeah, she's pretty stable in these conditions. She sort of heals over and then the keel and the sails work together to stabilize the boat. Yeah. So. It's like cool to see like the waves just like going off to the side. Yeah, she just pushes them out of the way or yeah. they go under. Cuts. Yeah. So, uh, how did you get here anyway? <laughs> we were in the giant Tortugas and I was on the back of the boat, like shampooing my hair <laughs> in the ocean. Pretty much you crept up on you while you were showering. <laughs> yeah. We're washing our hair in the dry Tortugas with reef sh safe shampoo, I promise. <laughs> so we're head full of suds in the ocean and Dallas comes over on Maggie and JC goes, like, Oh, hi, like what are your names? Like, and I'm over here fangirling, like how that, why are you asking them what their names are? And Jade comes down, she's like, that's Dallas. And I was like, I was like, oh shoot. I'm like trying to like make myself look presentable. They invited us to the beach and became friends, took them sailing and- Right before one of our charters, Brad came on and he started going off about like our jobs and like how we won't be here for a while and I thought I was getting fired. And we've been thinking that because business is kind of declining, that we probably don't need three mates. I can't fire my girlfriend, so one of you guys has to go on Delos. <laughs> That's mostly true, but there's actually a little bit more to this story. When we met the gang at the Dry Tortugas, Brad mentioned to us that Jade had actually watched our videos with her dad growing up in Ohio. I started watching Delos on YouTube and kind of realized that this whole lifestyle is impossible, like possible. I kind of grew up in a cornfield, as people like to say, so I didn't know that people even lived on boats or did that sort of thing. So I graduated high school, saved up some money, quit my job, moved across the country, bought a boat. I had never even stayed the night on a boat before. I didn't know what a cleat was or how to tie one. I just bought a boat. When we heard this, we decided to bring it full circle and invite both of them along for the sail. And next thing you know, I get offered a sailing scholarship and here we are. Here we are. First time leaving the country. Awesome. In the best way possible. That's amazing. So JC, you normally work and sail on a pretty good sized catamaran, uh, Zodiac. How big is she? Um, Zodiac's a 62 foot fountain pajo. Wow. Um, and what are some of the differences you've noticed now that you've had a chance to sail on a monohull on the ocean? Well, the 
sailing on the monohull when you heel over, it's like not necessarily a bad thing. Because <laughs> on catamarans, if you heel over, then that's a very bad thing and you're overpowering your sails. But the catamarans are a lot more stabler than monohull, so it's definitely a big balance difference. Um, I actually ran into the bathroom door this morning pretty hard. <laughs> Hopefully nobody heard that slam. <laughs> but I like I like this a lot better. You can the I don't know the wind as it passes through on the boat is just like a different feeling than it is on Catamaran. But this is like a lot faster too, and she's a lot more she cuts through the water a lot smoothly, especially in like the big old swells that are that are coming up onto the boat. Yeah. Ahoy, Delos tribe. The YouTube algorithm works in mysterious ways, and you have no idea how much engagement from you helps us. So please smash that like button, send us a comment, and if you're not a subscriber, it's super easy. Just click below. As we edge closer to rounding the dreaded pirate waters of Nicaragua, I gathered everyone together for a briefing, just in case the worst imaginable however unlikely, became a reality. Uh, Kaz and I were doing some research and over the last couple of years there's been numerous incidents of boardings and thefts, uh, mostly within 100 miles of the coast in like the fishing ground. So that big kind of shoal, that shallow part that sticks out from Nicaragua, that's where most of them happen. And so when we were doing our research, we uh, basically read about like some of the incidents that happened and the last one that happened that we could find was in 2019 and most of them were in 2016, 17, and 18. So maybe it got less, or the situation got better, or maybe people just heard about it and so they stopped going through that part, um, which is exactly what we're doing right now. So one of the reasons why this is a longer trip is because we had to sail an extra few hundred miles to get out around. Most people recommend going at least 100 miles off the coast, but we're like, 230 miles off the coast. Extra safe. Extra safe. In fact, we're closer to Jamaica than Nicaragua at the moment. So that's why we planned our route, is just like to go way out to sea, to get away from any islands. Because I think one of the incidents I, I read about was that uh, it was light winds and the guy was like sailing very slowly and he sailed quite close to one of the islands on the shallows. And then a small fiberglass boat came out with an outboard with two guys in it and asked him to trade fish for like cigarettes and alcohol. And he did some trading and then another boat came out and asked him for something else. And then he did something with them. And then after that, like four boats came out with like five dudes on each one. And they just jumped on board all of a sudden and stole all this And in one case, like they even stole the entire boat and ran it into the shallows, so. We've had three incidents over the years where Delos was boarded. All of them were at anchor rather than at sea, but I can tell you it's no less traumatizing and feels like a complete invasion. We just got boarded by some guys, 4.30 in the morning, and Yasha heard something. There was some guy's face kind of looking into the, into the bow and jumped up and just started screaming as loud as I could at him, jumped in his boat. It's probably one of the scariest things that can happen cruising is your home. You know, it's just like your home being invaded. Yeah, it's the second time it's happened to us. It came out a lot better this time. First time was in Solomon's. Uh, so in general, we're just gonna go as fast as possible. If we need to motor sail, we're gonna motor sail. We're just gonna keep moving. We're also gonna go dark. So I turned off the AIS. AIS is now in like silent mode. So we can receive like the transmissions from the big ships and stuff, but we're not transmitting anything. Uh, and also lights. So we're gonna run at night. We're gonna be dark. So we're gonna run, uh, turn the, the lights down in the cockpit. We're gonna turn off the map lights. If we see a big ship coming and it is an actual ship, like you can see it on AIS, you see it on radar, and we're getting a little bit close, then we can pop on the lights, but then after they go away, we should turn them back off again. If anybody approaches us, you just let people know that you're alert and you're awake and you're watching out. And so like when we were in Indonesia and people would approach the boat, we would just shine a, a light on them 
and 100% of the time they left because they know you're up and watching. So, you know, we're going to be checking radar. If we see any strange targets, like a small fiberglass pango won't show up until it gets quite close to the boat. Um, so if somebody sneaks up on us, we have this horn right here. So I would just blow this horn, wake the entire crew up, and then we should just come running out like a bunch of crazy people. Hey guys! Hey! Hey! Over here! Over here! Over here! Brady, over here! Brady! Kazo, what's happening? There's a guy right there. Maybe he's right here. So like everybody should choose a weapon. I'm gonna take or two. Or two. <laughs> so I, I call dibs on the spear gun and the flare gun because I've watched Dead Calm way too many times. <laughs> I've actually picked out one for JC already. Is it my shit? <laughs> oh gosh. This is a very special machete. This is my Fijian machete. Um, and if you don't hurt them with this, you'll certainly give them tetanus. <laughs> so you can have one of these. Okay. It's really rusty as well, and you can have one of those. Tetanus, tetanus for the win. Ready, team machete. <laughs> so Kaz, and maybe this will be yours? Yeah, pepper spray. So, and the general idea is just to run out like a bunch of crazy people and just go berserk and just don't even let them come up to the boat. Just be like, nope, we're not interested in trading for Get the hell away. Bye. Um, because honestly, if, a, if four pangas come up with five dudes and they all have knives, and then there's not a lot we can do. If, that, if the worst case happens and we know we're gonna get boarded, our best case scenario then is to go inside. Um, we'll do like, an SOS call because that's one of the reasons why we're out in the shipping lanes is so there are boats around. Uh, so we'll do an SOS or a Mayday call. We'll turn on the e -perd. Um I'll shut off the fuel and then we should just go and like barricade ourselves into the back cabin, I think. Because uh, back there we can, uh, we can like disable the rudder from back there too so they won't be able to like steer the boat or tow the boat. So, oh, and the other thing is the people said that they they actually are very nervous about being found out because they are really fishermen. They're not really bad people. They're just fishermen and they've come on hard times. And so they said one of the things that really deterred them was taking photos of them. So if you take photos of them to recognize them, they also said that uh, when the VHF radio crackled to life in English, like they really freaked out because they didn't understand and they thought that another boat was coming. And so I'm gonna hide a VHF radio in the back. Other than that, like, I don't know, we just gotta sail fast and like... Yeah, I don't think out. any pirates are getting us in these conditions. Also, the weather's in our favor. Yeah. Because they're coming from that direction, which means they'd have to come out in like 20 plus knots of winds. Yeah. And, okay. If you guys have any questions, like just let us know, or I think, yeah, like we said, just wake up, you know, if it's anything like, oh, this looks weird, just wake Brian up or whatever, and then, We'll yeah. take from there. False alarm is better than no alarm. Yeah. That's right. So just if we can see them coming, we all go out and act like crazy people. And then if it's obvious that they're that we don't really have a chance, then we'll hide. Then we'll go inside okay. and we'll let them steal whatever they want. You ready? <laughs> Team Machete? <laughs> Arr, prepare to be boarded, my days! <laughs> Cooking on that lean, huh? That lean, bro. <laughs> and those gains. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you don't get this much muscle just eating veggies, dude. <laughs> so like, it's hard to tell how much we're leaning until you look at the gimbaled stove. It's like, oh. <laughs> Show us how much we're healing over. Drop the ball up there. Oh. Ugh, I know, Nux. We're in the middle of the ocean and it's 25 knots. We're seeing like 30 apparent now, so we're gonna go down to our second reef. Luckily, it's pretty easy to do. Dream. I was like, woo! <laughs> yeah. Staying away from the pirates? Yes, we're, we're, it's bad weather, which is bad for the pirates, but good for us. Okay. And we're going fast, which is bad for the pirates and good for us. Good. And we're 250 miles away from Nicaragua, which is bad for the pirates, but good for us. <laughs> good! <Yeah. laughs> so we have a lot of things on our side here. Awesome, that's great! Continuously, since they're conscious breathers, meaning they have to think to breathe. Um, so what they'll do is if they get tired, they'll shut off that side and turn on the other side and they'll keep going and swimming. And you can tell when a dolphin is sleeping, they'll kind of, um, if it's like a pod of females, they'll circle around. Um, but if it's a pod of males, they'll usually just wait through the water really, really slowly. So they have been known to <laughs> chew on pufferfish and then pass the pufferfish around because they, they feel the toxins of the pufferfish and they get a sort get of a euphoric buzz. effect from the pufferfish. They get sad. Uh, they Don't dolphins have, dolphin have sex for pleasure. They do. Dolphins have sex for pleasure. Yeah, yeah I heard that. Up next on Delos, we finally make our turn south. You want to do uh, the turn for us? Oh! You get the honor. Baby Nugget takes up a new hobby. Baby paint on your belly. And we have just under 300 nautical miles to go. Okay, I need a I need a JC start off. <laughs> okay. And I'm working on my my ego. Yeah, it needs a lot of work. Hey, hey dolphin! Hey, hey dolphin! Hey! <laughs> mean faces, everybody! Burr. Mean faces! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a serious conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell. It's totally... serious business here. Serious business? Yeah. Alright. Even right. five days out of Mexico, we're still eating Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> For the day I die. <laughs> 